Hello and happy International Chess Day, chess fans. I'm Sam Copeland, a national master on the content team here at chess.com, and I'm here today to show you an incredible computer chess game. What would happen if you combined the positional skills of Anatoly Karpov with the raw tactical and calculation ability of Garry Kasparov? That is effectively the question that the developers of Stockfish New, the new strongest chess engine on the planet, are trying to answer. They've taken a neural network, the technology that powers AlphaZero and Leela Chess Zero and gives them great positional evaluations, and integrated it into Stockfish, the traditional chess engine that looks at a hundred million positions per second. This new engine is estimated to be at least 30 ELO stronger than any engine on record, and it debuts today in the Chess.com Computer Chess Championship with a 200-game match against Leela Chess Zero, followed by another 200-game match against the most recent version of Stockfish. We're going to look at a warm-up game played against another strong neural network engine, Stufles, played just three days ago. Stockfish New opens the game with e4, and Stufles elects to respond with the Sicilian defense, and in particular, the dragon variation of the Sicilian defense. This opening is always sharp, always exciting, so it's great to see it here in this battle between these chess engines. Now, we're going to see the engines follow theory for a while. It's hard to say whether this is knowing or unknowing from the engines, but we are going to see a novelty on move 13 from Stufless as after a3, instead of the played pawn to a5, Stufless innovates with a move never before seen in the chess.com database with pawn to b4, a pawn sacrifice. This is a very, very dangerous pawn sacrifice, as you're going to see in the coming lines. I think almost any human, when faced with this novelty over the board, would collapse in very short order. After pawn to b4, you've got to accept the sacrifice pawn, or things are getting wrecked anyway, and you gain no material. So pawn takes on b4, and now a5, trying to open the a file. Now, Stockfish New is not going to open the A file voluntarily, so pawn to B5 trying to keep things closed, and Stufless insists, pawn to A4. If Bishop takes A4, you do have an idea to try and solidify everything, but you don't have enough time to do it. Queen to A5 here, and after pawn to B3, E5 simply wins the game. This move is terribly terribly anti-positional. You never want to play this move in the dragon and make your bishop bad and make this d5 square a tremendous weakness, but here you're just pushing the bishop away from the knight. White loses the knight on c3 and loses the game very quickly. So after a4, we get bishop a2 trying to keep things closed, and Stufless insists again with another pawn sacrifice. Pawn to a3. Now after pawn to a3, it is possible to take, but very, very detailed analysis seems to show that white would be busted after capturing on a3. Here, the move is queen to a5, putting pressure here and here. After king b2, defending both of those weak points, rook to a8 puts more pressure on a3. And pawn to a4 seems like it defends everything, but then bishop takes b5. Boom! This is a tremendous move. Now, of course, you have two captures here. First, let's look at knight takes b5. This capture is relatively easy to refute. You can now take on a4 here. You're hitting the knight and you're hitting the bishop, so the only move to defend both is knight back to c3. Queen check, king back, and now you just need to remove this knight and you can win on a2 and give checkmate. So here e5 pushing the bishop around and then rook to c8 will win the game. Now the harder move to refute after bishop takes b5 is the capture with the pawn. a takes b5. But here we have queen b4 check, king back to a1, and now rook to c8. And in this position it turns out that there's just nothing productive for white to do. And in particular there's no good way to make use of the heavy pieces. For example, you would like to play rook to b1, attacking the queen and pushing her back, but this shows exactly why you couldn't move that rook and introduce your pieces. Rook takes a2 check and wins. If the king takes, you simply get mated on the a file, and if the knight takes, we see that we did need that rook on d1. The queen is now hanging on d2. Very, very nice stuff. 
Of course, that's only a sample of the possible lines, but as a result of lines like that, we do see Stockfish New decline to accept this sacrificed pawn here on A3. Instead, I think we see the first brilliant move from Stockfish New. Rook H E1. Stockfish New simply ignores everything that is going on on the queen side, takes the one piece, the rook on h1, that is not contributing, and brings it to the center of the board. Now, it seems like things are going to get wrecked on the queen side, and we do see the destruction of the white pawn protection around the king. But after the king takes, what turns out to matter is the pressure on the central files that white has. Centralization is still important. And it turns out that the bishop is able to simply slide over to b3 and cover the white king. And the white king is actually totally safe, as it turns out, safer than the black king. So this rook he1 move, very calm, very collected, proves to be the turning point in the game. So now we see rook to b8, pawn to e5. If you take here, the rook takes here, no fear. The uh, bishop on g7 is allowed a discovery, but after a move like 98, the rook simply slides over. There's huge pressure on the d file. And again, the white king is totally safe. And the rook is also helping defend this pawn on b5. So after e5, Stuflis plays knight back to e8. There's a trade on d6. There's a trade on g7. Queen d4 check, king g8. Now bishop b3. Again, this bishop is just a beautiful defender of the white king. Now bishop takes b5, and now knight d5, and this is a critical moment in the game. There is huge pressure here on this pawn on e7, and of course, if that pawn goes, there's also a tremendous attack against the black king. How does black defend that pawn on e7? As it turns out, there's not any really good way to defend that pawn. If knight f5, then white is able to win a pawn with knight takes e7, and after knight takes, trading queens removes the defender of the knight. And now white should win this game relatively comfortably thanks to the extra pawn and the pressure on f7. So after knight to d5, we see rook e8. And now we need another brilliant move. We have rook takes e7. Boom! Another great move. Now after rook takes e7, which is forced in this position, you could simplify to an endgame. Knight takes and then take on d6. You have one extra pawn in this endgame. Are you able to win from here? Probably best for black is to keep the queens on, and this is very close. Maybe it's winning for white, maybe not. Instead, we see Stockfish New now try knight to f6, choosing to remain a rook down to continue the attack. Now, after knight to f6 check, we see king f8. You pick up a pawn on h7, and after the king moves over, e 8 the same. The knight returns to f6 and pushes the king back to f8. In this position, knight d5 is now the dangerous continuation of the attack. There's the idea of queen h8 mate. And obviously, the rook is also under attack. You can take on e7 and then maybe pick up on d6. And now you would have two extra pawns, so it's no longer a question of if the endgame would be winning. It will be easily easily won. So after knight to d5, the best defense as played by black is pawn to f6, cutting off this diagonal so that the queen cannot deliver mate on h8. Now the queen takes on f6 check, but the sacrifice of the pawn now allows black to play knight to f7, covering the checks, and this knight, as knights often are when they're placed right in front of the king, is an amazing defender. It covers all of the dangerous uh, squares where white could give check from the queen. So here, knight to f4. This is a great move. Of course, there's a sacrifice here. Queen takes down here on d1 is possible, but knight takes g6 is made in two. The king can run in either direction, but after king to g8, there is a beautiful mate here with queen to h8, and the knight on f7 is uh, is pinned by the bishop on b3. And if you move over to e8, we simply have a queen and helper mate with the queen stepping directly in front of the king. So backing up here, after knight to f4, the only defensive try for the engine is to block on the d file, and we now see bishop to d7. In this position, Stockfish New plays another really, truly brilliant move a move that I think almost no human could find. 
So in this position, what you would like to play is knight takes g6 check. But after king to e8, trading down on e7 is not necessarily going to win the game easily. It will remain very, very complicated. So after king to e8, what you want to do is play queen to g7, which is almost game over. The idea of queen to f8 would crush black except for rook takes b3 check. And now if you take back with the pawn, which is a mistake, rook to e2 check, and there's no way to avoid checks introducing the queen or the bishop, and suddenly black has winning counterplay. Therefore, in the position after bishop d7, instead of taking on g6, Stockfish New plays the brilliant rook to d2. This is a tremendous prophylactic move that simply stops the idea of rook takes b3 and rook down to e2 with check. That check is now covered, and the idea is simply to go back to this idea of knight takes g6 check, king e8, queen g7, and mate is simply forced. As it turns out, there's really nothing that these pieces can do to stop this idea. So... The only way to fight on is now rook takes b3 check, getting rid of this monstrous bishop on b3. Now c takes b3, and again, you must defend very carefully. The idea of taking here and then taking on e7 is a monstrous threat, so you must pull back rook to e8, trading the queens off right now. Knight takes g6 first, and then after the king moves over, you trade the queens and the rook is able to recapture. That's why the rook had to go to e8, so it could recapture and not the knight, so that d7 would be defended. Now, in this position, white has four pawns for the piece. Is this an in-game win? Now, Stockfish is evaluating this as about plus one, which can be on the border between a win and a draw, but I really think that this is simply a winning in-game. You have a passed b pawn over here and three passed pawns on this side of the board. In time, as you slowly position your pieces, you're going to push forward on both wings, and I don't think that any defense from black is going to save the game. So we see relatively slow, patient maneuvering play for a while. The rooks are going to get traded on the d-file, which is relatively natural. And now white is slowly going to make progress. The key is to improve your knight and improve your king and eventually push the pawns only when you feel like you have control over the position. Now to make progress, we're going to see Stockfish New start swinging the king over to the king side after placing the knight on a really good square here on d4. And then it's time to start pushing the queen side pawns. You can't really make progress with just the pawn on the b file, but these pawns together support each other and they're able to push on the king side. Eventually, the B pawn is going to be used as a decoy on the queen side and you'll be willing to sacrifice it in order to make progress on the king side, which is what happens right now. After the knight takes on B6, these pieces are about as distant from the action as possible. It doesn't matter too much for the bishop, which is a long range piece, but it definitely matters for the knight. The pawns are rolling on the king side, and all there are, although there are some mines that white needs to avoid stepping on here, it is a winning position. This pawn now pushes forward all the way to h7, and in this position, black has no ability to really attack any of the pawns or to thoroughly blockade them. This knight is trying to stay here to keep a dark square blockade going, but uh, in this position, if it ever actually goes to f6, then you simply sacrifice one of the pawns and you take here, you're up two pawns and you win in just a couple of moves. So after king g5, we see bishop c8 and a nice maneuver here from Stockfish New. The knight is going to e7, no way to stop it. And after it goes to e7, it sacrifices itself to push this pawn forward. Again, knight f6 simply allows you to sacrifice and win the knight on f6. So knight takes e7, pawn to f6 check, king back to h8, and in this position, you need to be careful one more time. If you take the knight, then drawing by force is bishop to e8, king f6, and bishop takes g6, a nice sacrifice to force stalemate. Therefore, after king h8 here, you simply push forward with f7, and there's no way to stop promotion. 
You can try to put the king on g7 to cover both promotion squares, but if one piece is defending two things, then usually it's not really defending both of them. You simply sacrifice the queen here, and then you make a queen over here. And after knight to g8, there's no kind of blockade or anything because queen f7 and you have mate coming over here. Therefore, after f7, the knight sacrificed itself, and after king takes, we simply get a queen next move, and after bishop c8, that queen gave checkmate on the board, which did conclude this brilliant game. Again, if you want to see more games where Stockfish New is taking on Leela Chess Zero and where Stockfish New is taking on the most recent versions of Stockfish, simply head over to chess.com ccc to see it in action.